Murder by Experts. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Experts with your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, whose books have been translated into 17 languages and have sold over 10 million copies and author of the recently published detective novel, Below Suspicion. Good evening. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective story writers. Tonight, our guest expert is the noted mystery novelist, Craig Rice. In keeping with the spirit of the holiday season, Miss Rice, herself a witty and humorous writer, has selected a hilarious and suspenseful comedy mystery by Joseph Rusko. And now we present Carl Eastman in The Case of the Missing Mind. Again, Mr. Andrews? Doc! Aren't we the troublesome patient? Oh, Doc, you gotta believe me. It's all a mistake, a terrible mistake, you see, Doc? What's your angle, huh? I tell everybody the truth, the honest truth. So I'm a lunatic? What am I doing in a nut house? <laughs> no, no. Now, look, our nice cousins are coming to visit, all the way from Two Forks. So let's be a good boy and watch our excitement curve, hmm? Good boy, huh? Just wait till they show up. I'll tell them the way I got shanghaied here. They'll sue you for a million. They'll sue everybody. Meanwhile, if your hallucinations persist, those fantastic tales, that alleged man you murdered... But it was all real, I say. You got cotton in your ears. All that abracadabra, the Latin and the princess, Alibaba. There was no Alibaba. I never said anything about Alibaba, just the Latin and the princess. I can't help it if nobody believes me. It's true every word. Now, calm down there, or I'll be forced to put you in a straitjacket again. Now, we wouldn't like that at all, would we? Of course not. Pleasant dreams, Mr. Andrews. And remember, this is not the Arabian night. No. No, all this... All this can't be happening to me. Not me, Kenny Andrews. Everybody's known me before. I always know the right time. But I tell this story, they look at me queer. So it does sound screwy. So it's my fault? My golly, the tree dance fired, I swear it. Listen to me, someone, listen. All right. Only two weeks ago, everything's normal, see? Like always, I'm doing the best I can with an angle. Only the best wasn't so hot the last few months. I've been up the creek, the horses were dogs. My one unhocked suit was all ripped and torn by a certain Broadway bookie. That is important. Keep your eye on that suit. I was absolutely from hunger, sitting in the lobby of a cheap hotel in the 40s, when, lo, this strange-looking character walks into my life. Good morning, friend. Do you ever dream? Just like that, he began, the strange-looking guy with the purple hat. Do you ever dream, my friend? I'd noticed this character before, shadowing me for days. On Times Square, I button my shoe. How do you do? There he is. I lose him in Schubert Alley, and he's the man right behind me when I'm putting a slug in the automat. And now here's Mr. Queer sitting beside me. Do I ever dream, he wants to know. What is it you dream when you dream, my friend? I am interested in wish fulfillment. Say, listen, pal, are you for real? What's the idea telling me anyway? Go take a long drop. I'd like a word with you. You see, Mr. Andrews, But I... you know my name. I am a mystic, sir. I know all. Oh, yeah? Maybe you know where I was born. Two forks. And now about your dreams, sir. Say, who are you, anyway? Oh, call me Aladdin. Huh? Caught you kidding. Aladdin? Yes. Would you like to try my magic lamp? The guy is strictly from a nightmare, I figure. But let him talk. Look who's selling who to Brooklyn Bridge. Answer, friend. You began to rub my lamp the wrong way. Now, look at Mr. Aladdin. Suppose you scramble. Please, fellow. Put up your hands. Reach for the moon. Suddenly, the crazy little guy had me covered. 
with a little green gun. Reach! Hey, 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 what is this? Just stick up, you fool! To throw away good fortune when it seeks you out? For the last time, sir, what is it you dream when you dream? The theme that keeps returning. Your heart's desire. Like a nightmare. Watch your step, Kenny, I says to myself. You're dealing strictly with a query. Humor him or you're a dead pigeon. Oh, okay, sure, bud. I get you now. I, I, I always dreamed that, that somebody suddenly handed me 50 grand and a beautiful princess. Ashkenazi! My gosh, I, I hardly get it out of my mouth when it happened. You got to believe me, you got to, I tell you. This weird character in the purple hat, he whips out a huge envelope, he counts out $51,000 bills, he hands them over to me, he shouts, The princess, my friend, will come later. And he disappears out of the hotel. <laughs> on my honor, on my mother's grave. That's the way it all started. I warned you my story would sound like a hophead's fantasy. I don't blame anyone looking at me sideways. I, I even examined my own head listening to me tell it. Such things don't just happen. A strange character in a purple hat. A green gun. And there it is. Fifty grand. First, I don't believe my eyes. A guy like me, sharp, knows what time it is. He's strictly from Missouri. Still, them greenbacks look like the real McCoy. I stumbled over to the bank on the corner and up to a bank teller. I had to find out. Hey, would you kindly uh, mind breaking this bill for me like a good fella? Well, uh, let's... Uh, uh, uh. The guy stared at the bill. Stared and stared. And then at me, suspicious. Uh, say. Goodbye, Kenny Andrews. Ten years stretch. A thousand dollar bill? Well, uh, I... He's casing it, but good. Easy, Kenny. Keep that heart still. Keep that heart still. Keep that heart still. We'll hear you. Here it comes. Yes, I... Uh, <laughs> you know, we don't get these very often at this branch, and... Uh, <sighs> uh, how would you like to have your change, sir? Clean! It was clean! 50,000 cabbages! A minute ago, I couldn't crash an edict stand, and now I'm king! My head spun round and round. I nearly passed out. Next thing I know, I'm spread out on a bed back in my crummy hotel room. I feel in my shirt. It's still there. I count the bills again. All there. Passports to heaven. Hold on to that green. Hold on. All the money in the world and the world at your feet. First, buy a new suit. Don't answer. Get rid of these rags. The sweet at the Waldorf. Ignore it. You're not here. Don't talk. It's yours. The guy in a purple hat, he came over to you. So it's magic. So what? I heard of such a thing. I read of such a thing. You're such a wise guy. Maybe I'm dreaming. No. No, not that. No. No, please. The one time in my life. <laughs> Hello? It is real, my friend. Oh. Mr. Aladdin? You are not dreaming. Oh, wonderful. You were thinking of buying a new suit. I am? I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. You are not to do so. This is the only condition. You must always wear that suit. Disobey and the penalty is death. You are being watched. Remember. But everything else on heaven and earth is now yours for the asking. Happy joys, my friend. You see? This gets screwier and screwier. But Aladdin's my boy, see? No questions asked. Who cares about front when you're healed with 50 Gs? Clothes make the tin horn, but when you're a prince, <laughs> that's how all my troubles began and headed me for this joint. When I can't resist anymore and go and tell the strange events to the boys along Broadway, they give me the quick brush a -roo. was unnatural. Am I dreaming, I says to myself? All right, if I am, I'm going to get rid of the silly sequence. The rags must go. I enter a ritzy dog shop. <clears throat> my good man? Yes? Uh, I was just torn to shreds on the stock exchange. You know, the highly boily Ah, uh, I see, sir. Yeah, you know the bulls? I <laughs> understand, sir. A new suit. Yeah, I want to order about a dozen, and I want them out of this world. Something with a little dash supreme. Yes, sir. Well, now, if you'd like to consider these numbers here... But just then, my eye caught something looking in at me through the window. 
was another eye. And it had a mad stare. And over it was a purple hat. And the pocket was aiming at me against the window. And without seeing it at all, I knew it was a little green gun. These charming summer worsted, sir? Look, pal, uh, what are you showing me suits for? Who said suits? I said overcoats. You said overcoats? With a fur collar. A fur collar? In July? Are you mad, sir? Why not? If I gotta wear a coat to cover my past, it might as well have a fur collar. I always visioned me in one, but only in my wildest dreams. So, next with a lot of haberdashery and gloves and this and that and a walking cane, I'm ready for anything. I'm out to live, see? Come what may. Even a dog catcher. That night in Manhattan finds me slumming at a private table in a midnight casino. The classiest spot in town. Where before I could never even afford the bar. You are the monsieur? I already had a few quickies all over the stem. By now, I am a god. Champagne, Charlie, and a bottle for every lady in a joint whose escort can claim a purple hat. All eyes were upon me with admiration, including the most gorgeous little number at the very next table. Uh, big pardon, monsieur. It's the way they're smiling at me, very polite. You forgot to check your coat at the door, monsieur. It is a rule of the establishment. Oh, yeah, we'll see about this. Call a head waiter. I am the head waiter. Oh, yeah, huh? Go drop that. Gentlemen, please. It's that luscious brunette with the creamy shoulders sitting alone at the next table. Pierre, your manner. You disappoint me. But he's wearing an overcoat. Silence. Uh... Why do you not take this gentleman's order? But uh, it is a rule of the house. Uh... Rules are for the riffraff. Can you not see he is perhaps an eccentric millionaire? That he is moreover to be my guest. Oh, so, princess. In that case, princess, a thousand pardons, your imperial highness. Go ahead, say it. Tweet, tweet. Kenny Andrews got the DTs. All right, don't swallow it then. But will someone please solve it for me? I am lonesome, young man. Won't you join my table? So this is the princess I was foretold. We made it a twosome, this royal doll and me. We killed three bottles, never taking our eyes off each other. Each was too entranced. Now what are we doing? We're sailing along 57 toward Park Avenue. Her head on my shoulders. Oh, can you shine? In a sky-blue limousine, driven by a little midget. You hurt me a little midget. Be kind to me, babushka. She is a Russian, it seems. Princess Julie, from a branch without the heads cut. And she gives off like a rose. Promise you will be very kind. Where are we going, princess? <laughs> you silly goose. Don't you remember? Oh. We are on our way to my apartment. <laughs> Sit closer. <laughs> More vodka. My darling, mm. it is the champagne of the Volga. Sure, why not? <laughs> and what about some delicious joyva? What's that? Oh, joyva is the love candy of the Orient. Open your mouth, my little Kenusha. Oh, it's wonderful stuff. <laughs> oh, this ain't happening. This ain't really happening, is it? Oh, hush, my life. Go on, tell me more of your philosophy. Hey, where was I, Princess Baby? Angle. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all a matter of angles, see? I'm full of them, Your Highness. In this town, if you're sharp, cut your wits, never give a sucker an even break, one can rise to millions. Uh, now, taking two forks. Two forks? Who is two forks? In Oklahoma, where I was born. Ah. <laughs> out there, they don't even know what time it is. If I stood out there, Your Worship, I'd commit suicide. Mm hmm. I ran away when I was 12. More vodka, Kenusha. You tell me about it. I must know all about you. Naturally. I live with my Uncle Liggy, see? Well, a poor yokel. He spends all his time digging, mm -hmm. digging in his backyard. <laughs> oh, what? Wayne! <laughs> Can you tie that? <laughs> How quaint. Go on. Yeah, my, my cousins, Your Excellency. Just as dopey. Joe and Fanny and all the rest. Mm -hmm. it, the cows give him milk today? <laughs> it stifles me, get it? There's no room for a smart guy with a niche in a place like that. 
You listening? Yes, drink up, my love. So I get my first angle. I organize a cousin's club, elect myself treasurer, buy me a ticket to New York, and shake the dust forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drink up, huh? Your grace. Your grace, uh, the, the room's turning sideways. Oh, uh, come closer, my heart. Hmm? And kiss me again. Hmm. And kiss me. Hmm, it's hot in here. Then why not take off your overcoat, Kenyusha? Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm all right now. Say, Princess. Hmm? Whose cane is that over there by the piano? It's not mine. No, no, my sweet. It is my husband. Hmm? Some music. Your what? Oh, don't be alarmed, Kenny. She's out of town. Oh, I hate him. Oh, I hate him, the beast. He abuses me so. Oh, he does, huh? Oh, Babushka, why am I telling you all this? Oh. Because always in my lonely life I am looking for someone. In my dreams I have seen him and he has caressed my cheek. Uh But the days go by and the years and she does not come. And yet, always I know that someday... (laughs) And tonight it happened at the midnight club. One line. Oh, dear, Anna. Do you feel that way too? Oh, Jenny, you do love me. Oh, do I? Oh, Princess, I, I'm crazy about you, Your mm-hmm. Honor. With all my heart and soul, and it's a great privilege I never visioned. I, I'd do anything for you. You'd do anything? Anything, just to have you. Would you commit murder for me? Murder? Would you commit murder for me, Kenny? What? What's that? Shh. Speak low. This is a speaker. My husband. Hmm? It's his knock. Your husband? I, I, I thought you... Would you chill for me, can you, sir? Well, he, 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 he's got his key Then door. choose my gun. Take it. When he opens the door, shoot. Yeah, but, but, Do you but, love me, can you, sir? Do you want me? Huh? Oh, my heart. Think only that monster stands in the way. The door. It's open. He's coming in. The, the, there he is. What are you waiting for? Well, shoot, shoot. shoot. <laughs> what do you dream when you dream, my friend? You killed him. My golly! It was him! Mr. Owen! Hey, Chief. You know the guy we've been getting complaints about all day? With Aladdin's lamp? That raggedy bum with the fur coat in July? Casey, I want him picked up and put in a cage. He's right here now, Chief. He wants to see you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, wild eyes. I can't stand anymore. I'm going to give myself up. Casey, don't go away. I don't want to be left here alone with this lunatic. What's up? He says he just bumped off a guy a half hour ago. What? Who'd he bump off? Aladdin. Aladdin? <laughs> Ain't that a hot one now? <laughs> I don't know what made me do it. I killed him in cold blood. I don't know what come over me, but she's absolutely in a clear, I tell you, and I'm willing to fly alone. Hold on there. She? Who is she? The princess whom I was doomed to meet. The princess? Why, sure. Now, I don't th- give me any more of that Arabian Nights. What the devil are you wearing a fur coat in July? I think you're crazy. I'm beginning to think so, too. Shut up. Stop shaking. Now, what about that 50 grand fairy tale? It's gone. After we killed him, we ran out of her apartment. I felt in my shirt and it was gone. We killed him. Where's the princess? She had an appointment with a hairdresser. What? Sit down. You mean that murderous... What go- murderous? I absolve her. I turned her head. For once in my life, I'm going to act like a man. I killed him. But I can't stand it anymore. My, my conscience been haunting me. It's like a nightmare. You expect me to swallow that hocus pocus? What do I look like? Then don't swallow it, but please solve it for me. Where is the corpus, if any? Why is dead and to be? All right, let's go. But if you're dragging me along on a wild goose chase, I'll put you away in a padded cell. Now, come on. <laughs> It's 
Vacant. Bare. No one even lives here. Where do you see a body? Can't understand. My gosh, officer, I was just here, but now it's empty. Hey, what are you trying to pull on Can me? Can I help you, gentlemen? Who are you looking for? Who are you? Oh, Mrs. Podolsky, the janitor. Well, who lived here last? You know a Princess Julie? A Princess Witch? <laughs> I'm afraid, mister, you got the wrong building. No one's been living in this apartment for the last six months. <laughs> What about it, Pierre? You're the head waiter in this nightclub. Do you ever know or wait on such a dame? A princess. A princess Julie. Yeah. Uh, but no, Monsieur Inspector. She is utterly unknown in this establishment. That's a lie! You remember Don Well just a couple hours ago. My fur coat. She was sitting at the next table and... Pierre, you... do you know this eccentric jerk here? Huh? Take a good look at him. Monsieur, I have never before seen him in my whole life. Get back in my car, you. You're headed for the judge. Princess Julie. No, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I remember something now. She gave me a piece of paper it's somewhere. A phone number. Here, look, look, look. The phone number. Her hairdresser's where, where I was to call her. Instead, I gave myself up. Honest, look. Let's see. Here, here. There's a phone in that store. Go ahead, call it. Ask for her. See if I'm crazy. All right. Kenny, just one more chance I'll give you. But if you're giving me the business again, I'll tear you limb from limb. Come on. Hello? Hello. Uh, is this a hairdressing parlor? What's it? What number do you want? Who is this? Describer. A ravishing brunette. Shut up. Uh, this is Inspector Ross, Police Department. Is this a hairdresser's... My dear fellow, this is a private sanitarium for the insane. What? Dr. Bennett speaking. Tell him her teeth are like a pile. Tell him... Shut up, you... <laughs> Sorry, Doc, I guess this is just a bum steer. You see, I got a prisoner here that told me that a Princess Julie... What? What's that? What's your prisoner's name? Uh, Kenny Andrews. Kenny Andrews, that's him. Don't let that man away. Get him right back here. He's an escaped lunatic. What? Well, I'll be... Now this makes sense. Look, Doc, give me your address quick. I'm delivering him myself in person, and it'll be a pleasure. Is the princess there? What do they say, huh? What do they say? <laughs> Brother, you're going home. Let me go! Let me go! Is this your man, Doc? Yes, that's him. He escaped from here two days ago. You're a liar! i never seen you before in my life. Uh, Damon, give me a hand, quick. Now, now, let me alone. What are you doing, huh? I'll bust you one. Hey, please, this is a terrific... Thank you, Inspector. It's lucky for the community you found him. Yeah, and am I glad to unload this baby. What a ride he took me for. What an imagination. Oh, he's definitely a schizophrenic, poor lad. Too bad. Well, of course, we'll just keep him here under observation till he's committed elsewhere. You notified his relatives? Yes. They're on the way now from Oklahoma. They hadn't seen him since he was a child. I hope they won't ask for his release. That would be tragic. It'd be bloody murder. Why, he's a menace. I'm sure glad you're taking him out of circulation. And that's my story. See, the whole truth. I swear it, it all transpired. Listen to me, someone. You don't believe it, then at least solve it for me. Let me out, you hear me? Open this door and let me out. Just while my cousins get here. That sawbone's a liar. I tell the honest truth to him, a lunatic. I'm Kenny Andrews. I always know the right time. What am I doing in the hospital? Such things shouldn't happen to a dog. Open up, I say. Let me out. You again, Mr. Andrews. Aren't we the troublesome patients? You just wait till I get here. Your cousins are here That's now. Right, Let's wait. calm down so, yes, so they won't dollars. get frightened. So uh, we can so go home with them to Two Forks. So you Otherwise, we'll dollars. spend the rest of our life here. Uh, uh, now that's the boy. Uh, this way, please. Jenny is ready to see you now. Oh, am I glad you guys came. If you only knew... You! 
What is it you dream when you dream, my friend? A Latin. You're dead. No. Cousin Joe, alive. Huh? Promise you will be very kind, can you, Sha? Princess Julie. Oh, you're on right, there. No, Cousin Fanny, you're crazy. But my golly, what is this? Am I still seeing things? Hey. Hey, you two been taking me for a sleigh ride? Oh, no, Cousin Kenny. How could we? Yokels like us take a sharp guy like you? Not your dopey cousins from Two Forks, Kenny. The cow's giving milk today? Oh, my golly, what's your angle? I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You will, Kenny. You remember Uncle Iggy? Huh? Digging and digging in his backyard? For what? Kenny. Wives. Right. Uncle Iggy died two weeks ago. You know from what, Kenny? What? Heart shock. Huh? You know what give him heart shock, Kenny? He struck oil in his backyard and became a millionaire overnight. Huh? You know who he left his six million to in his will, Kenny? Who? You. Huh? But you're not going to enjoy it, Kenny, because you're a non-compass menace. Get it? You're crazy. And that's where we come in, Kenny. You see, his will also reads that when you die, all go crazy. The fortune's to be split among your other cousins. You always did suspect you'd suddenly do one or the other, Kenny. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This, this, this has all been a frame-up. Sure, sure, I get it, everything. I've been framed. You wanted to make people think I'd gone haywire. So you put up this whole, this whole mishmash. How did you know where to trail me? Easy. For a smart guy with a niche, only one place for him. New York. And when we met up with a certain bookie, the rest was easy. Oh, I've got a headache. I've got things pounding in my ears. That, that gun I plugged you with. Blanks. That waiter at the casino. Cousin Georgie. The sawbones. Cousin Hank. The midget. Cousin Lou. The janitor. Cousin Bessie. Oh, this should happen to me. To me, you crooks, you swindlers. You admit it. You stay there and admit it all. Why not? What have we got to lose now? Who to do such a thing to your own cousin? <laughs> <laughs> You remember the Cousins Club, Kenny? Oh, now you angle your way out of this, baby. Come on, Fanny, you weep. Let's go. Make with the paper dolls, Kenny. <laughs> no! No, listen, your robes, you can't pull us on me. Never, you'll never get away with it. You'll see. You think you're pretty slick, huh? Wise guys. Make with the paper dolls, huh? No. No, they'll ever keep me here. Not Kenny Andrews. Such a thing shouldn't happen to a dog. What'll I do? Spray me, someone. Listen to me. All you punks tune in on my story, do something. What are you just sitting for? This thing's funny. Help me. Advise me. For crying out loud. Give me an angle. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on the case of the missing mind, which was chosen by guest expert Craig Rice. Miss Rice is the author of Having a Wonderful Crime. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of a New Year's Eve masquerade party with death as a guest in disguise, selected for your approval by one of the foremost leading mystery writers of the world. Until then, this is your host, John Dixon Carr, hoping you'll be with us again next week at this time. Case of the Missing Mind was written by Joseph Rusko. In our cast were Carl Eastman, Ann Shepard, Bill Zuckert, Ralph Camargo, and Bert Cowlin. Music under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Murder by Experts is produced and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. Bill Tonkin speaking, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>